Good morning. Good morning. Hey, y'all. This is your girl, Pastor Jew. And I just want to share something with you. I'm going to try something. Oh, this worked. Yo, it worked. So listen. Hey, my peoples. Um, tomorrow, I'm part of this Intimate Conversations, a self-love series. Good morning, Dr. Moore. Hey. And I just want to share with you all, you know, I want first I want to encourage everyone to register, of course. Um, the information is on the flyer. I probably should have put it in the chat. What's up, Pastor Dr. Moore? What's up, Bishop? How are you? How you faring? I see your I see your flyer. Are you going back in person worship? Well, you guys may not have ever really stopped based because you have your own location. But I saw your flyer for Resurrection Sunday. Um, so I pray that you guys have a great worship. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to share this live real quick um, to those that are watching live and those that watch the replay. Um, tomorrow, I'm part of this conversation. It's called Intimate Conversations, a self-love series. And... Um, I want to just share with you, well, like I said before, of course, I want to encourage, uh, we came back three weeks ago, oh, awesome, wonderful, Bishop, congratulations, I'm glad that you guys are able to do that, um, yeah, that's awesome, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for people that are able to um, to go back, hey, Dr. Tur Turrentine, good morning, sis, good morning, um, but I just want to share this real quick, um, talking about self-love, and I just want to kind of leave a message in connection with the flyer that I put up. Um, hey, Ro Hayes, good morning. Good morning, y'all. Um, as you all come in, you could tap some hearts. Give me, give a sister some heart love. Um, I know I don't go live often on Instagram and do live. I, I keep saying I'm going to do more. What's up, Finny? What's up, Pastor Finny? Good morning. Good morning. So I just wanted to kind of um, share this and kind of to tell, because somebody was asking the question, like, what is it? Because it says intimate conversations, a self-love series. Thank you for the hearts. I certainly appreciate the heart love. And what this particular Zoom is about, and I think I don't have my glasses on. But if you go to the flyer, the registration, hey, Reverend Jalita, the registration is there on the flyer. Um, I probably should have put it in the chat or put it in the description. I'll put it in the in the uh chat field or the what do you call that the the feed i put it in the feed uh when i get done because i gotta go and find it and then cut cut and paste it so anyway what i wanted to share i want to encourage as many of you that are able to join us to join us tomorrow um sauda johnson who is the founder of ron of the ron ash uh corporation has been doing this series intimate conversations around self-love what's up angel what's up julius Julius, when are we going to take my pictures? Are you back from Hawaii yet, Julius? And so let me get into it because I'm going to get sidetracked with saying hi to everybody. Um, <laughs> but I want to just share with you all, as many of you that are able to join us, register, join us, I, um, and come be a part of this conversation. Here's the thing. So this series that she's been doing, she's been talking to different people or having different people come onto her platform and talk about, you know, how, how they see self-love. And I know that a lot of us were not raised um, with a strong emphasis on loving self, right? A lot of times we were raised in very unhealthy ways to love other people more than we love ourselves, to put other people first. And, and not that those lessons were taught explicitly, but a lot of times they were modeled. Like what we saw maybe our parents do or older siblings or cousins do is people who invested and put a lot into other people and then live their life doing that only to get to a certain age and be fully depleted or, you know, recognize that they spent 30 years in a, a relationship where the other person got all of someone's time, energy, life, blood, and then only to be left by themselves or without a partner or a spouse or that relationship to end and they're fully depleted. And so when I was invited to be part of this self-love series, I, I said to the young lady who's hosting this, like, 
I want you to understand where I'm coming from, right? Because here's what I've come to know and understand, and it's and it's even biblical, but more importantly, what I've learned is that it is impossible to really love somebody else if you're not courageously loving yourself. Like you can invest in people and you and, and I'm not saying that you have zero love for yourself, but it is you're not adequately giving somebody true love, even if you're giving them everything, because a lot of times that's out of bad teaching. We saw things modeled that weren't healthy or for fear of losing them or fear of being alone or, you know, there's some unhealthy attachments, right? Abandonment issues, rejection issues. And so what I was saying to Sauda, which we're going to break down tomorrow. So I really want to encourage you all to register and join us is um, like you cannot. And some people feel like, oh, no, I don't you know, I love so and so. Um, but you cannot fully love someone you can now you can pour, pour everything you got into a person but again that doesn't mean that you love them because a lot of people pour into somebody else for a host of other reasons and some of them most of it ain't got nothing to do with love like I said it could be out of fear it could be out of rejection issues you know low self-esteem unworthiness issues right but to really pour love into another individual, you cannot do that without courageously loving yourself. And what I mean by courageously loving yourself, because in reality, it takes great courage to love yourself. Because if I love me, if I really care about me, sometimes I have to make decisions and I have to make executive choices about my life that make other people uncomfortable. That may even make someone feel some kind of way because I'm choosing me, right? Like if you're in a relationship, and when I say relationship, I'm not just talking about intimate relationships. This could be platonic, this could be business, and it could be intimate, right? This could be a family relationship. But if I am, a, if I am in a relationship with you on any level, and you are doing something to me that hurts me, you might be benefiting from it, but it's hurting me, right? It takes courage to tell you no and hell no, as a matter of fact, you're not going to keep doing that to me. Either you're going to stop or I'm going to get out of this relationship. That takes courage. And most people don't do that easily or consistently. Most people will tolerate a level of pain <laughs> and disrespect and hurt, like I said, for a host of reasons. And this is not to blame anyone. I'm just saying what I'm saying. And so it takes courage to tell someone, no one, hell no, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to take it. You're not going to keep doing that. This ain't going to work. I'm out. We done. Whatever, whatever you have to say or do to love yourself. Right. And and the reason I can't fully love you until I love myself courageously enough to do that is because what I model to you, what I model to people watching, what I model to my children is that it's OK to to take on hurt, disrespect and pain for the sake of having a relationship with someone. And that, my friends, is not healthy. It's not healthy and it's not something that God even called us to. And a lot of people feel like, oh, well, this is my lot in life. This is what God has called me to. No, sis, no, bro. No, it's not. It may be what you have. You may be what you're tolerating, but it ain't God sent. And so I just want to encourage you all. Number one, come and join us tomorrow night for the conversation. But I want to just leave this with you all to courageously choose you. And again, to do that, to choose you every day, to choose you is, is courageous because so many people don't want you to choose yourself over them. People want you, people who, especially if they're unhealthy themselves, right? Especially if they broke in and they're unhealthy, they want you, um, nah, sis, 
<laughs> you know I keep a hood. Angel, don't laugh at me. You know it come out every now and then. People, there are people that want you to deplete yourself for their benefit. Y'all hear me? There are people that don't mind you depleting yourself. They don't mind you being sick. They don't mind you being broke. They don't mind you being tired as long as they benefit. And it takes courage to say that's not going to continue. It takes courage to say, no, I choose my peace of mind over having you in my life. I choose a sense of self-worth over having this in my life. I choose joy over having this in my life. That takes courage because a lot of people, most people will choose to have a person. And again, this could be platonic, business, family, and intimate. But a lot of people, you know my story. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, Marlon, what's up? A lot of people will say, oh, well, I want the person so much in my life that I will tolerate the disrespect or I'll tolerate the abuse. I'll tolerate the misuse and or I'll tolerate, um, you know, the blatant, the blatant, you know, dishonor or just the manipulation. A lot of people choose that stuff. And I'm not judging nobody. I'm just saying that it takes courage to choose you. And I'm and I just want to offer for those that are on live and those that have watched the replay. Choose you. Choose courageous love. Making those executive decisions comes on. It brings about peace. Absolutely. But it's hard. Yeah, absolutely. You come on now. And it's hard because we all want relationship. We want to be in relationship with people. Again, whether that's family, nobody wants to lose their best friend. But if bestie, if bestie is running you broke, leave bestie alone. <laughs> I miss you. We have to link up. Come on, Angel. We can link up. We only live five minutes from each other, girl. You can come over here anytime. We can link up. It takes courage to choose you. Because most people want you to choose them over you. And we got to get to a place where we stop doing that. Because that's not even what God wants for us. That's not even what God... God ain't said, well, you know, let them run you let, let them run you down to nothing. But make sure they survive and make it. Are you kidding? No, that ain't. that's not even in the scriptures. And the one story that's in the Bible... With the prophet and, and Hagar, that was that was that was to exemplify something very particular and spiritual about God and God's people. But that is not no one's mandate in life to choose someone who is intentionally out to hurt you or they're hurting you because they don't know no better. Because some people don't know better. Some people have ra were raised or, you know, were taught such bad stuff. They don't even know that what they're saying is toxic. They don't even know that their energy is foul. They don't even know that the decisions they're making is hurtful and harmful, right? And it takes courage to choose you. I had to drop a few. I choose me. Come on. And I just want to encourage you. Number one, yes, join us tomorrow night. But what we're going to be talking about in this intimate conversation of self-love series is the courage it takes to choose you. And that choosing your joy is going to make some folk uncomfortable. Choosing jo your joy is going to make some folk uncomfortable. People are not going to like some of the choices you make because you're choosing joy. You're choosing happiness. You're choosing peace of mind. You're choosing, you know, to be well. Do you know that there are environments that are toxic and you can literally get sick? Like, I know we say it like, oh, you make me sick. We say it. But guess what? There are people that can actually make you sick. People that can make you gain weight. I call it worry weight. You in a relationship with someone that makes you worry all the time, you will gain worry weight. I've seen it happen. Gaining 50, 80,000 pounds because you worried about what they doing because they lying all the time or because they're, you know, dis disrespectful or whatever the case may be. People are literally sick, getting, you know, stressed out, ulcers, can't eat, can't sleep. And all of those things affect your physical health. There are people out there physically unhealthy because they're in a relationship with someone. And again, this could be intimate, this could be platonic, this could be family, it could be business. Oh, this conference is going to be off the chain, right? 
And then when you say no bueno, not doing it no more, then they have, then they say this, oh, what's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. I'm choosing me. I'm courageously choosing me because what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're treating me is making me sick to my stomach, literally making uh, you become friends with doctor. Come on. <laughs> you, you, you go into the hospital every other day, your hair falling out. If you would just leave that relationship alone, you'd get better. You'd feel better. Come on, mental health. Come on, Michelle. There are literal environments making people sick because sometimes it's hard to courageously choose you. And I just want to encourage folks. Listen, we've come through a pandemic. You've come through too much to not choose you in 2021. If you survived a pandemic, you should choose you in 2021. You've earned it. <laughs> I want to just let you know, if you survive 2020 with a modicum of sound mind and good health, listen, don't you dare pick up what was in 2020, 2019, 2021 should be the beginning of you courageously choosing you because you've come through too much. You've come through too much to be mentally sick, emotionally sick, spiritually sick. You can't pray. You can't hear God's voice because somebody is tripping in your life. Come on, man. No, I want to ch I want to challenge folks to begin to courageously choose you. And that's hard. That's hard because a lot of times we're choosing stuff for fear fear of, you know, rejection. We got rejection issues. We got abandonment issues. We saw stuff modeled by our parents that wasn't healthy or our older siblings, or we were just in an environment. Yeah. Or we were just in an environment where everybody was toxic. And so you just think, isn't this normal for everybody to cuss everybody out and hurt each other? No, it's not normal. No. Some of us were raising environments. Everybody was just cussing each other out. That's the, isn't that what we do? No. No, it's not. Mm -mm. And sometimes you don't, people don't know better. So I want to encourage folks to courageously choose you. And that may mean disrupting other people. People may say things like, oh, you think you all that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Listen, I've had people say to me stuff like, oh, well, you don't, you don't even care. No, it's not that I don't care about you. I care about me. That's not the issue. The issue is not, I don't care about you. The issue is, I care about me. That's the issue. That's the, that's the thing you're missing. I care about me. Therefore, I can't with you. <laughs> I, it's, not, it's not that I don't care about you. I actually care about you and I care about me. That's not, that's not the problem. Me caring about you is the problem. I care about me. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the big idea. That's the big deal. You know, and, and, and if you don't think you're a big deal, you should. You are a big deal. You're a big deal to God. You're a big deal to the kingdom. And I want to encourage you to treat yourself like that. And a lot of times we weren't raised that way. No, very few of us. When I say us, I'm talking about a lot of African-Americans. I'm talking about folks that's, you know, inner city, maybe not necessarily exposed to a lot of the world. I don't know. But we weren't, people aren't necessarily taught to like, yo, you worthy of better. Some of us didn't hear you are worthy of better until we became adults. You know what I'm saying? Come on, a little more. Yes. I care about you, but the, the matter is not me caring about you. The matter is me caring about me. I love me. Therefore, loving me means I cannot choose you today because you choosing you means me gets hurt. And I like me. I happen to like me and because I like me <laughs> and love me, I'm courageously choosing me. And, and just because a person says you don't care about me is not a reason to tolerate their shenanigans, their foolishness, or to continue in that relationship at that level. And I'm not saying you got to go and block it. I don't believe in blocking people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't have to do that. I just, you know, you call me. I don't want to talk to you. I just ain't going to answer. The voicemail will pick up. You know, so I'm not go through your phone, block, block, block. I, you know, I know people joke about that a lot. I, that's not something I do. It's not something I, you know, push. I might go work out. Come on, angel. Absolutely. But it's it, it takes courage to get up and say, today I'm choosing me. 
which means I can't choose you or I won't choose you. Not because I don't care about you, but I actually happen to care about me. Come on, God will do the blocking. Absolutely. So you ain't got to go around being mean to people and blocking folks and all that kind of stuff. Well, some people you might have to. I don't know. Some people you might have to. But you really can just tell people, nah, it's, that's not working for me. Being with you ain't working for me. Hanging out with you ain't working for me. You know, being besties with you ain't working for me. I know we say BFF, but you know, what ends up happening is I always pay the bill. <laughs> so I'm, it's running up my tab in life. My mental tab, my emotional tab, my physical tab. Messing with you is running up my tab. And that's not how that thing is supposed to be. Sometimes, you, yeah, yeah, you have to sometimes. And I agree with you. Sometimes you got to block some folk, right? Because some folks are aggressive. And they really want what they want from you. And listen, just because a person really wants you doesn't mean... Like, some people can be very aggressive. Like, no, uh-uh, uh, you know... And I don't, and I shouldn't say it in a male voice because that's not just men. Women can be aggressive too. Some people can be very aggressive about you staying in a situation with them. And again, this could be everything from family to intimate. It doesn't have to be intimate. Some people can be very aggressive and don't mistake their aggressiveness for actual care. The way you know they care is how they treat you. What they say, how they do by you. So just because they're aggressive about you not leaving them or not distancing yourself from them, just because they're aggressive about that doesn't mean they actually care. They're just aggressive. <laughs> Some people are aggressive, like, no, we're going to be together. Okay. But, that, but that, that aggression is not followed up with true with love and care and concern. Right. And when I say love, I don't mean like, oh, the, the mushy feelings love. I mean, like, I love you to do the right things by you. I love you to honor you. I love you to, you know, care about you. Right. You know, I'm broke, sister. Raw coffee. <laughs> Come on. So I just want to, you know, I just and manipulators woo, and manipulators are great. I great at that. Manipulators will make you feel like they really want you. No, they just want to manipulate you. And they're often very aggressive. And what I mean, aggressive, I don't mean angry. I mean, like they're 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 res, res, they, they persistent and a person can be persistent. And really what they they're just persistent to have you, but they don't persistently love you. They don't persistently care. They're just persistent. <laughs> they're just persistent and you got to know the difference and so i just want to encourage folks to radically choose you in 2021 you have come through too much if you survive this pandemic you have come through too much in 2020 to come to 2021 and you still choosing other people over yourself and uh, like i said most of us were not raised to think of that way we were raised to worry about and think about everybody else because someone told you that loving you and choosing you first was selfish. No, it's self-love. It ain't selfish. I mean, I guess it could be considered selfish, but that's not a bad thing. It ain't bad to be a little selfish right now, but it ain't just selfish. It's self-love. I love me. I care about me. I love God. And because God loves me, I love me. And I'm courageously, radically choosing me in this season. And I just want to encourage y'all to radically choose you. And that's going to disrupt manipulators. That's going to disrupt narcissists. That's going to disrupt people who have an agenda with your life, an agenda with your money, an agenda with your mind. Some people just like playing mind games with folks because they get a high off of it. Some people like playing mind games and emotional games with people's hearts because they get a they get a kick out of it. And that's sick, but it's real. Right? And when you find yourself in that or you dealing with that, you got to choose, you got to radically choose you. You know, and people will tell you, "Oh, well, that's not right. You don't call me no more." Well, calling you isn't good for me. <laughs> right? And and at the end of the day, I cannot really, when it comes time for me to love my children, love my family, love my neighbor, and, or even love someone in an intimate sense, I cannot fully love them if I don't radically love myself. You will know when you are dealing with a person who loves, who loves themselves because they're going to love you nice. 
and and they're gonna it's, and it's not just like it's gonna be perfect but you will know the difference because the way they care about themselves is how they're gonna care about you if they if they take time to take care of their body they're gonna encourage you you should take care of better care of your body eating all that hog moss ain't good for you ma'am sir i love you too much to let you eat hog moss when you when you have met someone who radically cares themselves, they're not going to let you have mental health breakdowns. They're going to say, wait a minute, take a break. You need to rest because they do that. And so it's a different field when someone you will know when you are in any kind of relationship with someone who radically takes care of themselves because they're going to encourage you to radically take care of yourself. They're not going to let you eat yourself to death. They're not going to let you run yourself ragged without saying, hey, you might want to slow down, take care of yourself. They're going to they're going to encourage you to take care of yourself and, and be taken care of the way they take care of themselves. And that's the difference. People don't you know, that's the difference. So join us tomorrow for Intimate Conversations, the self-love series. We're going to talk about radically, courageously loving yourself and how that blesses other relationships that you're in. And this is, includes relation with your children relationships with your family members, relationships in business, work environments, and even intimate relationships, relationships with your friends. When I radically and courageously choose me, I will radically and courageously choose love other people and have a healthy boundary. Amen. So I love you. I just want to share that with you this morning. Go love yourself today. And if you have to make some executive decisions which is you radically crazy choosing you make them it doesn't matter what people think or say people gonna talk about you anyway did y'all know that people gonna talk about you anyway you might as well go and choose you <laughs> people gonna hate if they haters they gonna hate anyway if they don't if they gonna talk they gonna if they're if they're gossipers they gonna gossip anyway you might as well go on and choose you you know you might as well you ain't got nothing to lose and and again if you survive the pandemic you've come through too far to not choose you in 2021. So radically, courageously choose you, love you, and uh, and live live a healthy life, man. Life is too short. Live a healthy, blessed life. Doesn't mean we're not gonna have natural problems in this earth. We're gonna have those. But we can mitigate a lot of pain by radically choosing to love ourselves first. And then that pours out into my other relationships. All right. I love you all. Have an awesome and amazing day and uh, go and love yourself today. Seriously, go love yourself. All right. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>